Welcome to A Pagan Ways, Blessed Be. Hey everybody, this is Indy. I'm so glad to have my first two subscribers. Yay for me. I'm really happy about that. Um, so I wanted to show you guys how I made um, my little, what I call my witchy baked clay items. Um, of course, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make the homemade clay so that you guys can have that to make your items. Um, nowadays, especially with how the economy is, you know, the items that we need for ritual practice are pretty expensive. And um, we don't have all that money to go buy our wands, our affames, our cauldrons, our, you know, um, you know, other items that we need. Um, so why not make them on your own? And that's what I did. Um, I usually make my own stuff if, if I can do it. If I can't avoid having to go buy it, then by all means. But in this case, um, I was able to make my own baked clay items. So before I go about showing you my baked clay items, I am going to tell you how to make the homemade clay. You need uh, four cups of flour. Please make sure it is not self-rising. Please, because you're going to screw yourself. I've seen a lot of people say that they had trouble and they didn't pay attention to the flour that they use and then they ended up using a, a self-rising one and it just, from the get-go, it did not work at all. So don't put yourself in that situation. Pay attention to the flour that you're getting. You know, your basic white flour, all-purpose flour, as long as it's not self-rising, you're good, okay? Um, you need one and a half cups of salt. Now, this is not an edible batter, okay? It's not edible, so don't eat it. Uh, I have high blood pressure, and I didn't even dare to try to taste it, okay? And I've known how to make homemade clay since I was in third grade, and I'm 27 now, so I've never tasted it. I don't think I have. I might have as a child. Children do weird things. I don't know. But, you know, I just don't taste it. I don't remember ever tasting it. So, um, and then you need one and a half cups of water. Now, let me give you a quick note on that. I noticed that when I make my bake my homemade clay, um, I need to add in extra drops of water to get the consistency that I want to make it pliable. I noticed with the one and a half cups, you still got a lot of uh, dry flour around. And uh, yeah, that's going to annoy you. So go ahead and you start with one and a half cups of water. I should have said that, that you start with that. And then you add as you go until you get to, to the desired consistency that you want. Um, I've noticed that I've started with the one and a half and I ended up at two cups and I'm good but that's just me so whatever works for you but start with the one and a half and that's it you get your hands in there if you, you want to you know get in the mushy mushy have your kids do it if you want um, but if not then you get yourself um, you get yourself a long wooden spoon the kind you use to make uh, the pasta you know the the um, the sauce for the pasta you know you can use that or whatever long spoon you know long handled spoon and just mix it all together what I do is I do the long handled spoon and then uh, when all of it's pretty uh, you know good consistency where I could just stick my hands in there then I finish mixing the rest of it with my hands okay so then on whatever uh, surface you're comfortable with put a little bit of flour you know like if you're gonna bake something and you go ahead and you make the shapes. Now, the picture that I have at, at the beginning of this video, after my intro, um, those were my items pre-baked. Okay? I had them on, um, on parchment paper. That's where I made them. Um, I suggest that you do not bake them with parchment paper. Don't do that. Uh, if you could get wax paper or grease up your pan, do something where it doesn't stick. Because uh, my first time doing that, I made a mistake, okay? And yeah, 
so don't do that okay but I know better now so um, but I start off on parchment paper and I make what I'm gonna make it's pliable it's fun doing what you do and then you make your shape and then you preheat while you're mixing the stuff you preheat the oven to 325 okay you're gonna stick that in there and by the time you're done mixing everything and making the shape of what you want um, uh, the oven should be more than preheated uh, and you just pop that right in there with your wax paper and you you bare minimum 30 minutes depending on how big your item is you're gonna go up to an hour maybe more just make sure it doesn't burn and make sure it doesn't brown you don't want it to brown it's gonna stay looking the same color kind of as it did when you, it was pre-baked when it was just being molded um, and this is what my items look like after being baked here is my triple goddess item this is what I, I, I like to use this you can't see it but I have candle wax on this and uh, I like to put my candles on here it's a flat enough surface where it's, it's you know I can have a candle on here um, and then a little pentagram this I love to use um, to put um, my sage wand I like to put that right on there it fits perfect because um, my sage wand isn't like super big um, but okay if you have a small athame or if you make this big enough um, you can it could you could place your athame on there this could be like a little placement thing on your altar or just um, for decoration you know and there's really nice okay if you guys are wondering how I carve the shape into okay I used a toothpick be careful with the toothpick okay uh, because it'll lift up little pieces of the dough you don't want that to happen if you got something even more sharper than that like if you use a knife or something whatever is best for you then cool now here's something that I think you should know um, you can varnish this and paint it and then put like a gloss over it and I'm gonna tell you why I used my um, third item there's a third item missing in all of this okay and I used that to uh, as a little dish container for my um, water and sea salt when I want to purify something you know and I want to sprinkle it around or what have you that's my little dish for that if you do not have that varnished and painted at least bare minimum varnished and painted it's even though it's baked and it's hard it's going to get a little mushy on the top it'll go back to its hardness when it dries up but you just you know just to keep it how it is how it's it is in its original form after it's baked I suggest that you varnish it and paint it and then don't leave it without being glossed it just looks kind of tacky um, I like the natural look of my triple goddess okay this maiden mother crone if, for those of you who don't know um, but I might go around and varnish and paint this but this one I am for sure this weekend and I'm gonna actually um, probably post up some things so you guys can see it um, I'm gonna open up a tumblr account and we'll go from there um, and I'm gonna paint it black and have the lines of the pentagram painted white and then I'm gonna gloss it up real nice so yeah so I hope you guys that was informative enough for you um, I don't mean to ramble on um, so you know have a good day or a good night depending on where you're at good evening I'm gonna go finish my dinner and I hope this was very informative for you guys as always blessed be okay bye bye you guys are so cool